Welcome to MMT Chats. This episode brought to you by ISCAR with new ideas for machining intelligently. I'm Christina Fugis with Mullmaking Technology and today I am here with Amanda Wiria with Webco Plastics and you are the Manufacturing Support Manager. Did I get that right? The Director of Manufacturing Oh, support. I'm sorry, the we Director of recently. Well, congratulations on that. <laughs> All right, so you. speaking of that, before we get into Webco and the latest innovations and projects, let's talk a little bit about you. So tell us, share how you ended up at Webco, how you ended up in plastics and mold making. So interesting story. I have a music degree. Okay. N nothing that we really utilize at Webco. I don't know, that come in handy. But it, it'll come in handy at some point. You know, music for manufacturing yeah, there day. There you go. Ooh. We have that all picked out. Um, I worked on a task force that renovated hotels for a living. Okay. So I would go in and flip a hotel that was purchased and maybe not doing so well, do renovations, change over the staff, get it going back again and then we'd resell it for a higher price. Okay. So I did that for about um, five years. I had a little one, wanted to be home at night and met Charles Daniels at Webco and just kind of fell in love with who they were and what they were trying to do. And I got hired just as an administrative assistant. I just wanted something that was nine to five. And I think we stayed that way for maybe six months yeah. and we ended up here several, <laughs> six years later. Wow, it's been six years? It's been six years. That's wonderful. I mean, and so much has happened in that six years with Webco itself. And I would have to say a lot of that's probably what you brought into the company to get the word out about them. Because you're involved in so many different projects, locally in your community and within the mold manufacturing community. Let's face it, I first met you and Charles um, at an American Mold Builders convention because of Twitter, because of social media. Yep, that's right. And I, I was remember like, oh, that. When the early stages, when I used Twitter all the time, which I don't when use. When we as all much barely anymore. had Twitter. Exactly. Yes. And it was like, oh my gosh. Um, but since then, I've noticed you guys are just real collaborators and trying to get stuff done. 3D printing is one of the ones I want to talk about because that's obviously a technology and a process that's not going away. Mold making is a perfect application, um, whether it's the polymer side of 3D printing or the metal side. Um, you've been on a journey, Webco Plastics. The first time I heard about it um, was in a, did you win a grant with the University of Connecticut? We and did. Talk about that a little bit. So that was probably 2017, yeah. 2018 now, what, way before our world changed. Um, but we were fortunate enough to get a grant through the University of Connecticut, which is about 45 minutes from where we are at Webco. And we really just wanted to test out the idea of 3D printed molds. We knew it was coming. We wanted to get ahead of it. We wanted to see, you know, how does that work with what we do? Is it going to replace aluminum tooling? Is it going to supplement it? Where, where does it fit in? So we got through a little bit of it. We actually worked with Fortify as yep. well as part of it. We were able to get to the point where we got about 25 shots off of a tool okay. and COVID hit. <laughs> so we kind of hit the pause button on it for there, but we were able to at least get proof of concept, understand okay. how to work with it, what it would take for the machines, how we would incorporate it into our frames, possibly what parts for our customers it's capable of making. Got it. So that leads us to your current partnership, if you want to call it that, a project, is with Mantle, who's really a company that is focusing on this segment of manufacturing, mold making and short run production, all that kind of stuff. So how did that come about? And what exactly are you trying to, like it's almost like this is the next step. We learned all that, now we've met Mantle, we're working with them, and what are you doing with them? So we met Mantle last year through Westminster, okay. who have yep. great partners of ours. We met them at Amerimold, yes. so a wonderful Amerimold connection. And we really just wanted to see what that technology was. You know, it's the new shiny thing in manufacturing, 3D printing, but this is 3D printing metal. So yep. literally the shiny thing in yeah. manufacturing. And so that we were fortunate enough, Mantle partnered with us. We made a little uh, keychain giveaway okay. that we're giving away. And we wanted to just test proof of concept. So it's not exactly what we would use their application for, but we wanted to really just integrate it in a fun way to show okay. what it can do, let our team work with it, experiment with it a little bit. Westminster purchased one of the first printers from Mantle, so we're yep. hoping to partner with them to help our customers down the road once they get set up with it. Okay. And so what we learned through that is that aluminum tooling isn't going anywhere. Mold okay. making is not going anywhere, but Mantle is a great supplement to it. Say that again to the camera. <laughs> Seriously. Mold making is not going anywhere. <laughs> so we can use Mantle to achieve things that we couldn't with a traditional aluminum tool. Okay. And there's applications where 
aluminum tooling is still going to be the best fit. For the little keychain that we made, it's something we could have cut it in 12 hours. Okay. It took 60 hours to print with mantle. There you go. So not not best application case there, yep. but where mantle really fits is when you have a need for 500,000 to a million parts off of a tool, you want to keep the cost down. Maybe my tool room floor is busy, so yep. instead of spending 30 hours cutting something, we can spend 10 to 20 just doing the post-processing and have it be printing while we're building other tools. Got it. That's where we would really use that application. Another thing that we want to offer to our customers is we actually did the exact same project and we had Burn Tool and Design okay. yep. and they are fellow A and B A members yep. and they worked with us and printed one out of digital ABS for us. Okay. So that's going to give us about 25 shots before we start to get short shots. The mold will start to not be able to produce good parts. It's not going to hold a real tight tolerance, but it's a great way to get injection molded parts quickly and very cheaply into your hands if you need to do testing with them, if you need to send them to UL, if you need to test your material. It's a good case for that. So that might be maybe the intro before you build an aluminum tool. Got you it. build your aluminum tool with us, we take it to market, we make you 250 sets to start, a couple thousand, maybe we get up to that 50,000, 100,000 mark, and then maybe it's time to bring mantle in and we reduce the cycle time, we take advantage of the conformal cooling that maybe we can't achieve in an aluminum yeah. tool, and we help the customer, once they've built their market, make those parts for even less. That totally makes sense. It's just like that next iteration in improving the process and using technology, because the plan right now is not to invest in the technology yourself, having it Correct. in house. It's to use partners that we have the expertise. We want to work with partners like Westminster Tool and like Burn. To, to do what they're already doing. Yeah. Let's, instead of competing against each other, let's collaborate to offer our customers a better product together. Yeah. You know, that's what the mold making industry yeah. should be all about. And that, and that is what it's always been about. So it's, again, it's that, just that next step and getting even deeper into an advanced technology. Do you see that changing, that technology, changing who the future mold builder is going to be? I do. I think it's going to help us at Webco continue to achieve what we want. Our target for the tool room is we want to hire right out of high school. Maybe a traditional high school, maybe a tech high school, but we want those young male and female yeah. at 18 and we want to get them in the tool shop and we want to expose them to not only what they can do with their hands, but what they can do on the computers. So we know they're always tied to screens. Yeah. So here's how we can kind of bring it in and I think that 3D printing element is so much more intriguing to them than working on a mill or a lathe. Yeah, exactly. You know? There's no denying, right? There's no denying it. Now, how will you do that without having the technology in-house? Well, hopefully Westminster will okay, partner well I'm with us on that. Um, we eventually will probably get another 3D printer. We have one right now. We use it for fixturing a little bit on okay, secondaries yep. that we do in the molding yep. department. So that's something where we want to use that continuous improvement element. When we're out there and we're heat staking or inserting parts, how can we 3D print something to make it even better? How can we prototype, not just Got for it. our customers, but ourselves? Got it. All right, so let's go back a little bit pre-COVID, go through COVID. Webco is somebody that I think you thrive on in-person connections and being out there. The past two and a half years, how did you change or improve your how you serve your customers, how you educate your customers without being able to be out and about? We spent a lot of time on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, like everybody, right? Uh, we spent time painting the walls and decorating our backdrops, <laughs> making sure we had cameras with good lighting. Um, a lot more time just when you reach out, putting that personal connection in an email or in a phone call because we couldn't go and visit. Yeah. You know, our customers didn't want to see us. Our colleagues weren't opening their shops. It, it was a very strange world for Webco because we like to invite you in. We like yep. to exchange hugs. We want to show you around. We want to really connect. We want to work together. That's yep. what we're striving for. So it was a unique challenge for us. We're hoping we never have to go back to the UD challenge, but I think we got creative about how we developed those relationships. We 3D printed little flower pots and put succulents in them I and sent them out to the there. customers yeah. Yeah. for spring and just trying to find another way to connect. It's a smart. So even though we went through that, you learned something from it and you're still applying it. You're not like, didn't let it go. No, we have definitely learned to bring, bring our tooling floor yeah. onto Zoom. You know, let's talk yes. to the customers. Let's show them what we're working did on. Did you do let's any virtual type tours? So we did. We did a couple virtual tours. We actually did one for high school. Okay. We had a lot of fun okay. with it. We threw some cell phone holders across the screen and had the screens <laughs> jump throughout the shop oh, into different cool. areas. 
because a big part for us is workforce development. We typically, on an average year, have about a thousand students come in and tour oh, wow. the shop. Good for you. We couldn't do that. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't just dropping the ball, that we were yeah. staying true to one of our core values is impacting our community. We wanted to continue with that. So we filmed the video, passed it around to different schools, workforce organizations to just still bring awareness to manufacturing even though we couldn't have the kids in yeah. the shop. You make it work, be flexible. All right, before I let you go, and, and actually it's on that theme really, people and training and workforce. We have our t-shirts with our hashtag, Molds Make a Difference. I want to ask you, Amanda, to fill in the blank. Molds make careers. Careers. There you have it. Molds make careers, according to Amanda from Webco Plastics. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. And for everything mold making, visit moldmakingtechnology.com.